Hi, um, how can machine learning help our daily life in the ICU and which kind of phenotype uh, do we have and how, how can machine learning improve um, our under understanding? And that's why I found this really interesting uh, paper from our colleagues from Pittsburgh, from uh, CIMA, uh, which wanted to to analyze a big cohort with machine learning algorithm yeah, and, um, and look which kind of results um, um, they, could they could find. And uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, the huge cohort they had. Yeah, they had um, a retrospective uh, cohort with a um, derivation and validation where they tried to analyze um, uh, this septic patient and wanted to find the best clusters um, of um, phenotypes of sepsis. And then um, they get, got additional uh, cohort study, additional information to find um, a difference of biomarkers. And this is one of the, um, one of the cohort studies they used. And also they um, used randomized clinical trials, so big trials um, uh, in the past. And uh, we will focus um, later on on this trial, the protocol-based uh, care of early septic shock. So a randomized clinical trial who wanted um, to analyze um, the, the impact of um, early um, goal therapy um, uh, versus uh, normal therapy. But go a little bit back. What um, what they did uh, to analyze the different phenotypes, they um, selected 29 variables uh, out of uh, the routine data set of those trials, of those retrospective trial. And one of them was the demographic variables. So age, sex, co-morbidities. Um, the other one was out of the records, so the vital signs, the blood pressure, temperature, but also lab values from markers of inflammation, but also uh, organ dysfunction uh, markers um, for out of the lab. And all those uh, variables were put together to a machine learning algorithm, to a cluster analyzing, and then they um, found that four there are four phenotypes who fit the best the models. And actually those four uh, phenotypes we um, also find in our ICU. So we have an alpha uh, phenotype, so the phenotype um, of patient with less um, organ, organ dysfunction, um, of less um, lab values who are um, severe um, um, different from the normal value. We have a phenotype of older patient with more chronic diseases. We have a phenotype, the um, gamma phenotype with more inflammation markers. And then we have a, a huge group of uh, delta um, phenotype with the increased serum lactate level, hypertension, elevated transaminase. So those patients have um, uh, a severe kind of sepsis and it's also the, the, the biggest group um, in this study. And Andreas, those, I'm afraid yeah. you will have to move a little faster because yeah. we won't have time yeah. for discussion here. You know, yeah. this is only I one of the phenotypes, yeah. but there are many others. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the, I already, um, though, this is the phenotypes, and the phenotypes have also a different kind of uh, correlation of uh, biomarkers. So we have uh, pro inflammation and um, anti inflammation biomarkers, and those are um, represented here. So we see a different pattern uh, in those phenotypes. And what is the, and this is really important for the impact for further studies and for our approach in the ICU, is how could um, uh, actually change those phenotypes distribution further studies. And I will um, uh, show you here um, what happens if the phenotypes uh, distribution is changing. Um, they actually change the, the, the amount of um, patients in, of the phenotypes. And what you can see that in this study, which uh, was, um, that had no, um, no, um, um, different um, um, outcome of, of the study changed so that the 
increase of phenotype one pa uh, alpha patient, so um, younger patient uh, with less severe, did even uh, benefit from uh, from the early um, goal approach. But on the other hand, um, if you increase the um, um, the the delta um, uh, distribution, then you can see there's even a harm. So this just shows, okay, we have to look our phenotypes and then we have to reorganize our studies. And another uh, interesting study was um, um, from Mal et al, which wanted to show, okay, what kind of data um, dynamic treatment re regime modeling can influence the treatment. So it's pretty much the same um, um, model design, but what they did, they analyzed actual and the optimal um, uh, strategy for treatment, and they focused on fluid intake and um, norepinephrine intake. And what you can see that the optimal and the diff and the actual treatment was different uh, between uh, the. Tr uh, the, the groups and especially if you have a kidney injury you see okay that the optimal would be a li little more uh, fluid intake and um, um, a little bit more um, increasing dosage of the uh, norepinephrine so to sum it up yeah it is possible to phenotyping uh, with clinical uh, clinical data though the phenotypes can have uh, impact of the further um, randomized trials and the the Interesting question would be which impact would those phenotypes have for the um, further ICU treatment?